Czechia and Slovakia. From the end of World War II and until 1992, these two countries were united together. In 1992, partly due to the collapse of the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe, they decided to split up and become two separate countries. So considering that they were a country together and then decided to split up, I thought it would be interesting in this video to compare how the two countries do today in 2023, almost 30 years after the breakup. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. First, I think it's important to provide a very brief historical context. Czechia and Slovakia have existed side by side throughout history. Ever since medieval times or even earlier, the people that now make up Czechs and Slovaks already inhabited these regions. However, despite what I may have thought before writing this video, they were never really ruled together. Czechia today encompasses the historical territories of Bohemia and Moravia, which since at least the 10th century existed through the Duchy of Bohemia, then the Kingdom of Bohemia, and the Margraviate of Moravia, which most often were ruled together under the Bohemian crown. The only time the two were ruled together was during the times of Great Moravia in the 9th, 10th centuries, a super early version of what would one day become Czechoslovakia. But this early union didn't last long, and soon the West came under the control of the Bohemian crown, while the East was absorbed into the Principality and then the Kingdom of Hungary. Since 1526, the Bohemian crown itself had come under the control of the Habsburgs, eventually joining their empire, as Hungary joined up with Austria too in the informally known Austro-Hungarian Union in 1867, Slovakian territories went along with it. And so, these territories became once again united, although indirectly and still with their own rule, I would argue their proximity was a little more than the one Czechia and Slovakia have today by both belonging to the EU. It was only in 1918, after the end of World War I and the collapse of Austria-Hungary as a defeated central power, that the two were given independence together as Czechoslovakia. Later on, in the days preceding and also during World War II, Germany annexed first a part of it, Sudetenland, and then formed a protectorate over the rest of Bohemia and Moravia, turning Slovakia into a semi-independent puppet state. After the war was over, Czechoslovakia was once again granted independence, together, existing from 1945 to 1992 with a Soviet-friendly regime for a great part of that time. In 1992, they split up and became their own countries. We therefore understand that from very early on, they have existed side by side and even together, directly or indirectly, at specific moments. But before we keep going, a quick message from this video sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel, and so much more. They have exclusive award-winning films and shows that you just can't find anywhere else. And new content drops every week, so there's always something to watch. I'm a user myself, and you can probably guess my favorite category, history. Right now, I'm watching a series called Myths and Monsters that goes into history's mythological creatures and what is the origin of all their made-up stories, as well as this other one called Silver Empires, looking at the importance of the precious metal throughout history and how it was so important to shape the rise to power of many civilizations. And despite your preference, you always end up expanding your horizons into other topics because of the cool content they have. Plus, it's super cheap compared to other streaming services with annual plans starting at $4 a month that give you access to thousands of hours of high-quality documentaries and series that you can watch on any device, so if you're someone who loves to learn and know more, check out their informative and engaging documentaries through the link in the description, use the code GENERALKNOWLEDGE and get 25% off when you sign up. Now back to the video. So what about the territory today? Czechia is much larger and almost twice the size of its neighbor at over 78,000 square kilometers, while Slovakia is only 49,000. Czechia's capital is Prague, while Slovakia's is Bratislava, and both exist tremendously close to each other, being two of the world's closest capital cities. I made a whole video about this and you can watch that if you want. So now that we know the size of these countries, what about how that territory is in terms of infrastructure? Despite being significantly smaller, Slovakia has apparently a more extensive road network, although the quality of the roads isn't depicted here. Czechia's is bigger at 55.7 thousand kilometers, but Slovakia's is 40,000, which in proportion makes it so that more of the country is covered. In terms of railway, however, Czechia is far ahead with over 9.5 thousand kilometers of rails, while Slovakia 
only has 3.6. Both countries have 5 passenger airports, but the size of them is something I couldn't find to compare. I would imagine Czechia's are much bigger due to more population and more tourism. Population-wise, Czechia has 10.5 million people, while Slovakia has 5.4 million, just over half. Czechia's population density is 133 people per square kilometer, while Slovakia's is 110, pretty similar. There's not much to say about this, population is reasonably distributed among urban centers, as we can see on these two maps. The average age is 43 in Czechia and 41 in Slovakia, and life expectancy is slightly higher in Czechia than it is in Slovakia for both men and women. Language-wise, Czechs speak Czech and Slovaks speak Slovak. While the two are different languages, their geographic proximity makes them very similar. Most varieties of Czech and Slovak are mutually intelligible, forming a dialect continuum, rather than being two clearly distinct languages, still they are distinguishable because of different vocabulary. The religious beliefs of their populations are also a very interesting topic. While Czechia is about 70% non-religious, with only around 10% Catholics and 10% others, Slovakia is tremendously Catholic in comparison, at 60%, with 10% Protestants and only about 30% non-religious, still a high value but vastly smaller than Czechia's. According to a user on Ask Historians, this was because Slovakia was, as we saw, under Hungarian rule, while Czechs developed a strong middle class capable of supporting prosperous intelligentsia, Slovaks remained a predominantly peasant nation due to the oppression of the Hungarian elite that sought to maintain control over it. Not only much more conservative in general, but also with priests forming a much larger and more influential portion of the Slovakian elite. We'll get into some more demographics further ahead. Then the flags. Before they separated, Czechoslovakia used the flag that Czechia currently uses alone, a red, white, and blue one divided in three. The top horizontal stripe is white, the bottom is red, and the triangle on the left is blue. Upon independence, Slovakia adopted a different flag but kept the same colors. You can check my video on Slavic flag similarity to understand this. A white, blue, and red horizontal tricolor in this order from top to bottom, but that's the same as the Russian flag. And so to differentiate themselves, they added their own coat of arms in the center, left, in the same colors. The coat of arms is also an interesting comparison, and it's also related to the historical context. The Czech one dates back to the 1200s. It consists of a shield divided into four areas. The top left and bottom right are the white lion on red for Bohemia, then the checkered eagle on blue for Moravia, and the black eagle on gold for Silesia, the three provinces of the country. The lesser coat of arms is simply the shield of Bohemia, demonstrating the historical control that the crown of this province had over the others. The coat of arms of the Slovak Republic consists of a red shield charged with a white double cross standing on the middle peak of a dark blue mountain consisting of three peaks. The double cross is a symbol of its Christian faith and the hills represent three symbolic mountain ranges of the country. The origin of it is the coat of arms of Saint Stephen, the first king of Hungary. When it comes to government type, both of them are parliamentary republics. From what I can understand, in both of them, the people elect the parliament and the party or coalition of parties that are able to ensure a majority of the votes get to form the government. A prime minister is chosen, being approved by the president who is elected separately in another election and having very limited powers, and he then chooses his fellow cabinet members. Diplomacy is also an interesting comparison, both between each other and towards other countries. Together, they get along very well. In fact, it is customary that the first foreign visit of each country's new head of state is to each other. There are around 200,000 people of Slovak descent living in Czechia and 46,000 of Czech descent living in Slovakia. For instance, Gustav Slameka, a Slovak citizen, was a minister of transportation of the Czech Republic from 2009 to 2010, and in his office, he exclusively used the Slovak language. They also have a shared airspace agreement, among others. Both countries are a part of the EU and a part of NATO. When it comes to foreign relations of each, they're pretty common. They even both had a crazy dispute with Liechtenstein, who apparently claimed a huge territory inside Czechia and another inside Slovakia that they said had been illegally confiscated from the Liechtenstein family in 1945. Slovakia is slightly closer to Hungary than Czechia is due to their past shared history, and of course, Czechia may also be slightly closer to Germany due to sharing a border. Both countries have diplomatic relations with all countries in the world, save Slovakia with the Central African Republic. I honestly couldn't find out why, so if you know, just let me know in the comments. 
Now let's circle back to the demographics and especially focus on immigration. Czechia has various large groups of immigrant communities. As of 2022, the largest are Ukrainians at 600,000 and then Slovaks at 117,000. However, ethnically, their own population is about 95% Czech Slavic. Slovakia as well, but it's more ethnically diverse. Only 84% are Slovaks. There's 400,000 Hungarians, 70,000 Romanians, and 30,000 Czechs. In terms of immigrant communities, they represent only 5% of the total people, only Poland and Romania have a lower percentage, 156,000 of these immigrants are Ukrainians. Military-wise, here's how the two fare. Slovakia had an active conscription, but this was abolished in 2006. They currently have 19,500 active military personnel, a reasonably small armed forces. Czechia has around 30,000 plus 4,000 in active reserve. I think they don't have conscription. Czechia spends 1.5% of its GDP on defense, while Slovakia spends 1.75%. Currency-wise, there's also a big difference. While both countries are a part of the EU, only Slovakia is a part of the Eurozone, using the Euro. Czechia, in turn, uses the Czech Koruna. The exchange rate this latest August was that 1 Euro equals 24 Korunas. Slovakia used to have their own Koruna too, up until 2009, when they adhered to the Euro. When they did so, the fixed exchange rate for the change was 1 Euro to 30 Korunas. So by joining the Eurozone, Slovakia saw its currency gain purchasing power when compared to their neighbors, something that was the opposite before. Of course, this can all be pointless if Slovaks make very few Euros and Czechs made a lot of Kronas, enough to counter the exchange rate difference. And speaking of which, let's get into the economy comparison. Slovakia's GDP at purchasing power parity for 2023 is 192 billion US dollars, the 70th largest economy in the world. They have 12% of their population below the poverty line, while Czechia's is 537 billion US dollars. So over twice the amount, it's the 47th largest economy, and they have 9% of their people below the poverty line. Czechia's labor force works mostly in services, followed by industry and agriculture, while Slovakia relies even more on services and employment, also followed by industry and then agriculture. The average net salary in Slovakia is 1,067 euros per month. In Czechia, it is equivalent to 1,303 euros. GDP per capita means nothing, so I will ignore it, but in terms of wealth distribution, which is measured by their Gini coefficient, Czechia's is 23.5. In this case, the lower the better. The Czechs are actually the fifth country in the world with the most equal wealth distribution, but Slovakia does even better, ranking number three with 23.2, surpassed only by Iceland and the Faroe Islands. The Human Development Index of Slovakia is 0.848, which is pretty good. The closer to one you are, the better. They rank 45th worldwide, Czechia's is slightly higher at 0.889 and it ranks number 32. Security and safety wise both do pretty good as well and both are among the safest countries in the world. Czechia ranks number 12 in the World Peace Index and it could be higher if it weren't for its weapon exports. Slovakia ranks 26th, still pretty good. Both countries report low crime indexes and people are equally confident in their safety when walking alone outside. The main difference between them seems to be that Slovakia has a much higher perception of corruption and bribery in their society. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. So. That is how Czechia or the Czech Republic and Slovakia compare in various topics, leading us to understand how the two countries today are tremendously different in many aspects, perhaps justifying their separation in the recent past. However, if we were to separate any two parts of various countries, they'd be completely different too. North Germany is super different from the South, as is the East from the West. North Italy is a whole different world from the South as well, so maybe it could very well be that these two would have remained together as well, but that was not the case. Would you prefer that they had stayed together, or do you like that they are each their own country? Also, do you have any corrections or additional information about these two? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.